I'm going to share my experience with AI and how I'm using it in my business and how we're working with clients to help automate a lot of the processes specifically around sales and marketing. Um, so my AI journey started a year, 18 months ago. Um, I think I started to use Jasper AI initially for content creation, and that was built on top of GPT um, the API, and then ChatGPT was launched. Um, and the second it came out, I went headstrong into prompting it, learning about it, and how can I utilize it for my business. A um, bit about me, so I run 60 Seconds. We are 10 years old, based in Bristol. We're a video production company, or now a video software company. Uh, I started my journey a bit like Jack, creating videos, very passionate. How do we help businesses? And now our mission is unlocking the power of video, utilizing AI. ChatGPT is where we started. Um, and then in the background of that, you've got API integration. So taking the ChatGPT prompts, plumbing that into a tool, getting an output, and then, and then doing something with that to make sure that it's an automated process. So who here uses three, uh, ChatGPT 3.5? Four. Four. Fantastic. Yeah. So um, just to talk through, hopefully, the difference is about 3.5 <coughs> versus 4. So this is 4. Um, it's multimodal, which means that you can upload audio files for transcriptions. You can upload video files for transcribing. Um, you can use text inputs. You can also analyze data now. So you can embed CSV files or PDFs. It can read it. Um, I think there's one further than this for Turbo. Um, and Turbo is faster, cheaper, better, and it just allows more for application use. We didn't build our platform on GPT pr pr um, because it's prohibitively expensive, especially when you're using four, and the outputs of four versus 3.5 are, are, are far greater. So we use um, Claude. So Claude is Anthropic, uh, which is an OpenAI competitor. So ex-OpenAI employees went over to Google, uh, well, Google invested company called Anthropic. Um, it's very similar to ChatGPT, but doesn't have some of the qualities of four being multimodal, but it does do the text input and output very well. Um, and it does far less of the hallucinations if done properly. So the difference between 3.5 and four are the amount of parameters that it's trained on. So 3.5 or three when it first started, um, analyzed the internet up to a certain point, that's 175 billion parameters. This model here is almost 10 times larger. Um, so the output is hopefully 10 times better. The context window of what you can upload into ChatGP has, has greatened, and especially with 4 and 4.4 Turbo. You can now upload uh, the equivalent to a 300-page book into the prompt, and it can analyze that before getting the output. So there are now jobs for specific prompt engineers, um, and I like to think that that's kind of where I came to building my platform, was just prompt engineering, spending time with it to make sure that the output comes back exactly how we need to take it to the next stage of the process. Um, I do highly recommend getting four. I get my, my, my employees to upgrade to four. This is Zach. Zach joined the business four months ago as an apprentice. Um, and when I asked Zach to update his LinkedIn profile, he put head of AI. So yeah, no, Zach is fantastic. He comes from a background of um, building hundreds of thousands of followers on social media. And yeah, he's, he's gone headstrong into QA testing, AI generated content uh, for us. So yeah, he is fantastic. Um, how many people know about custom GPTs? Adam, you know, because I told you yesterday. Yeah, all right. Oh, and you bought me on it. Yeah. So, so think of custom GPTs as mini applications for your business. And this is the main kind of what I want to talk about today. So think of this as the App Store. So uh, OpenAI and AI in general is like a new wave of the internet, right? So long are apps, we've had the heyday there. Everything is going to be apps built with AI. And existing applications will have AI embedded throughout them. So you've got the initial kind of launch of custom applications or custom GPTs. So you can now have these sat in your chat GPT window if you're on four. Um, and you can then call them. And they do very specific use cases. But the best thing is you can make your own specific GPTs. Um, so you can look at any business process that you're doing. You can train that specific GPT on that very similar process. So for me, I've just loaded on two salespeople in the past week. And part of the onboarding docs is 
First stage is a discovery call. Second stage is a demo. Once you get to the demo, upload your transcript that you capture. So we're trying to automate all of the follow-up process around the initial call. The aim being the salesperson only does the call and AI is doing everything else from capturing the lead to the follow-up. Um, and we just need them to do the, the actual call itself. So I've built a rocket demo, a follow-up assistant, and a personalized video maker. Then you've got other companies like Zapier that are building out integrations directly into your calendar so they can take actions. So actions are in its infancy, but it, I think we will get to a point where you can open up ChatGPT and know exactly what you want to do. It'll go to a specific custom ChatGPT or custom GPT, take an action, work with other software, and it will then be your own virtual assistant that can almost do anything on the internet for you. So if you haven't used it already, this is how to configure your own GPT. It literally will take you five minutes if you know what you want to do a first version. And I thought that was really exciting. So this Rocket Demo Builder, I've taken existing resources that I have in the business on training me and my company on how to deliver the best demo possible um, from a well-renowned SaaS uh, trainer. I've then uploaded the 60 seconds package breakdown and what, what um, prospects need to know about the business. I've given it a name, Rocket Demo Builder, and a description. And the instructions are very basic. It just says, ask first about the company name, business size, lead generation requirements, video requirements, etc. So you can upload a cool transcript, or you can specifically answer those quest questions. It can browse the web if it needs to, um, use code interpreter, or generate images. The output is then very specific to what I've said so and what's been trained on the PDF. So it's given a breakdown of a custom demo structure to give to the prospect for my sales rep to deliver on the next call. So they don't have to do the heavy lifting. They can just do more call cool volume, making sure that they're, they're primed for the next step. They've got what they need to do. This is merely a guide for them to follow on the call, specifically around the pain points, why they would be interested in our, our product and all the uncoverings that they took in the discovery call. The reason I've gone headstrong into automating the lead generation sales rep role is because I've hired and unfortunately fired every sales rep that's ever worked for me. It's actually my fault. I never had a clearly defined process. I was always moving the product. It was only me that came up with the pricing, right? So I, it's my fault that those sales reps didn't work, partly. <laughs> <laughs> So it got to the point where everyone says, oh, you're a fantastic salesperson, no one's like you. Well, I didn't have the budget to pay for senior salespeople, so I was bringing in juniors, expecting them to, one, go out and find the leads, two, do the actual conversions, and potentially account manage them as well. We're a bootstrap business, we didn't have budgets for um, a SDR, which is going and getting the meetings, an account executive to do the calls, an account manager to keep the clients there. So I was doing all three of those roles. I was finding them, I was doing the calls, I was keeping them. And unfortunately, I was ma mainly focused on bringing in new clients. So the ones that did sign on with us didn't Get stay experience. long enough, right? So it was constant replenishment of bringing in new clients. So when AI came out, it's taking everything that I'm doing from a sales process and making sure that it does it as well as I would, but puts it in the hands of young budding sales um, or existing or experienced salespeople, which I've got in the business at the moment. But the idea is just to generate them calls. How this will evolve is then plugging into tools like Zapier or Make. So run an action, um, go to a custom Zapier, trigger off that event that takes the past output from GPT into the tool. So this could be, uh, if an entry is into Google Sheets, it can then be passed into um, a custom GPT, and then the output can be sent out via email. Same sort of thing with a HubSpot contact record. It, we can then notify them in Slack. So these are simple automations that we've lived with in Zapier for many years, but you put GPT into the mix, it can then digest the initial input data and then translate that to the output in the next stage. And these can be infinitely long, and you can have them follow a very regimented step-by-step -step process to deliver the output ready for the next step. So I, I would like to think that GPTs and um, OpenAI, AI in general, is not going to replace roles, but only make everyone more productive in doing so. So I highly encourage everyone to be fantastic at using 
uh, AI to 10x that output. For me, we use GitHub Copilot in the business, I think it's 20 pounds a month, and I get 50% more productivity out of the most expensive resource in my business, which is my dev team. So it's, it's using it correctly, and now it can't write the full code stack. It can do the automated testing. It can do the things that actually my, my dev team do not want to do, right? So if you look at the updating the CRM, everything like that, that can all be handled for you automatically. So I've got 10 potential use cases, and of course, GPT probably helped me with some of these. But if we look at different departments, like the HR function, it can help with policies, FAQs. So all the FAQs on my website were written by AI, purely because I had a mental block to write them myself. I trained it on what we offer. It then came up with at least the first draft, and I only had to do some fine tweaking. Employee onboarding and training. So we've got um, quite an extensive document that outlines all the tools we use, the processes, everything I never gave a salesperson before. I literally hired them and said, right, go on in, go get the leads, go get the conversions, and it never worked. You could have, um, in finance, I don't have the budgets to have someone in my business all the time as like a chief finance officer. I've got an accountant, but I could update up my profit and loss into ChatGPT and use um, Code Interpreter and it will give me suggestions based on my profit and loss where I can save money, where I can be more productive, where I can be more cash effective, when I'm gonna run out of money type thing. But if we use custom GPTs on one of these specific areas, you can go into ChatGPT and have that application that you're iterating over time and it can be specific and custom to you. And utilizing what it can do by going to the web, uh, web browsing and analyzing data, et cetera, is extremely powerful already. And it's, it's iterating itself and getting faster and doing a lot better going forward. So how are we using it in our business? And what's the product offering, right? So we're using AI to replace the sales rep role because we don't feel like we need a sales rep to do specific LinkedIn messages and emails because it can only do a certain volume of personalization. And for us, it's not gonna hit the volume that's gonna bring in the amount of inquiries we need or sales. So as a business, you've potentially got three routes to market. You've got paid advertising, which is very expensive. You need very clearly defined funnels to bring people through. You've got organic reach, personal branding, that's not really scalable, and it takes a good two years of time to really clearly define and, and generate leads itself. And then you've got cold outreach, which is where most businesses fall back to, is cold outreach, picking up the, call, uh, picking up the phone, dialing, sending out cold emails to people who have never heard of you, trying to convince them to take a call. So it's an extremely crowded space in um, cold outreach, and one that hasn't been innovated in many, many years. Now, Google and Yahoo released the other day that come Q2 next year, it's going to automatically block any business that's sending more than 5,000 emails a day. It's automatically going to block businesses that are getting a complaint rate higher than 0.3%. Right? 0.3% is every thousand emails you send. If three people complain to that, that you're spam, your whole business will be blocked. Right? So, great news for us. We're going to have 50 less emails saying, hey, would you like to work with us? Uh, using mail merge and unpersonalized ways of getting through. Everyone can spot an unpersonalized email if they make it into your inbox. And it's very hard to make it to the inbox. Um, so we looked at the prospecting process. What, what are we doing? What do businesses do for cold outreach? Um, what are these SDR roles doing? And how can we automate it? So number one, finding new contacts, using data sources, scraping data, Using that data to them, well, this is an additional step that they might not do, but verify the validity of the data, making sure that the emails exist, you're going to get a low bounce rate. Then researching the prospect. So if sales reps took the time to look at your LinkedIn, look at the business, look at where there is a fit and write something personalized, then you would research. But unfortunately, most salespeople are very lazy and will upload 10,000 contacts into a mass mail, send it, burn all their domains, and it's an absolute nightmare. That's where everyone starts with sales. I think it's really easy. Send out lots of emails, lots of calls come in. 
But in reality, if you sent out 10,000 emails and you got a 15 to 16% open rate, which is the company I spoke to the other day, every single email is landing in spam. But out of the 4,500 emails that they send on a daily basis, every week they get 30 leads and they got a conversion. So they think it's fantastic. Come next year, they're not going to be able to do that anymore. And actually it's doing more harm than good for them because they're going out to thousands of their target market with an email and they're never able to go back to them because they've essentially burnt their bridges with them because they, either they didn't engage with it and they can't send the same email again. So then we rate the prospects against our ideal customer profile or the client's ideal customer profile. This gives them a star rating. So that 10,000 prospect list then can be filtered by who's the most relevant, who's the most likely to be an actual client. Where can I spend manual prospecting activity on uh, channels like LinkedIn to reconnect with them, re-engage them, or spend time doing even more personalized content um, through a manual process on GPT or similar. Then personalizing the content on a one-to-one -one basis for the 10,000, that would take a, I think we did the calculations, you'd have to do a team working seven days a week, every hour of every day, you can do about 70 personalized emails a day. So we're talking about months of work or tens of people in a team to be able to deliver hyper-personalized emails at scale. Delivering the emails, that sounds really simple, let's push the button and let's go, but actually delivering it in to your primary inbox is super difficult. Um, because you've got spam and then you've got a breakdown of promotions, updates, etc. Everyone's got it categorized out and they've got spam filters to get through. Then we track all the engagement. So we're actually able to see who's opened it, who's clicked it. Did they watch the video? How much of the video did they watch? Did they reply? Did they book a call? Um, and then we can use that report to then analyze the data and look at any retargeting or anything else that we can do. Because as a B2B focused business, we can't go out with one email and expect a conversion, although many businesses still do. Whereas you might have heard it takes five to 11 touch points to actually convert someone or get them ready to even have a conversation with your brand. So the actual lead nurturing middle of the funnel, so you've got the email to find, find, verify, research and deliver, that's top of funnel activity. You might have four stages in your sequence, that's an additional touch point per one. Then once that sequence is, is finished, do you carry on sending or do you take the data and then do other activity that then complements it and takes it to different channels? So for instance, anyone who opens the email, clicks, uh, views the video, but doesn't reply, it's not that they're not interested because we can see that they were interested in the initial message, but they're not ready to have the conversation yet. So this can actively build lists and then we can then retarget them with a paid media campaign on something like an education platform like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. And the cost to do that is 25 pounds on average for LinkedIn per thousand impressions. So to have your video show up a thousand times to people that have not engaged, that's an additional touch point. If they watch 50% of that video that they see on Facebook, we can send them another video and so forth. So if we've got lots of content, that content can work with us and for us without us doing it manually. So we can then have a custom tailored experience for every single prospect based on their levels of engagement to then define what's their custom journey to our business before making the decision to jump on a call. Well, that's cropped off slightly. Um, so this is an example of a custom email that's written to Tim. So Tim's from Team Up. In the body of the email is a custom video for Tim. The content is based on the trained data that we've collected around the business and the role that we've got. It's automatically updated into HubSpot, although you can't see it very well. Um, it's updated the lifecycle stage to customer at the moment because they're a customer, but you can see that they viewed the video. This is their LinkedIn profile. That's all, man all automatically put into HubSpot. The lead status is update depending on the level of uh, engagement that they take during the prospection process. Once Tim clicks through, he goes to a custom landing page. The video is embedded in the landing page. It sends an event trigger to me into Slack to say, Tim is viewing your page. <clears throat> Once Tim views the video, it sends me another trigger. Tim is viewing your video. If Tim completes the video, it could be another trigger, right? That could be going into your actual sales team so that they can take action there and then to follow up with them, give them a call. And then if we track 
all of the email activity and how we can do this at scale, we've got 3,500 prospects, 2,945 have opened it, so an 82% open rate. We don't track the links that are clicked directly in this platform, but we get a 10 to 50% click-through rate, which is the industry standard is one to 3%, so it's 10 times higher. We've then got 1.9% replied rate, and we get a 0.5 to 1% interested rate. So if we can keep up those metrics, it means every thousand prospects that we're sending out, we should generate around 10 calls at the top or seven calls at the bottom. Now, sales is a numbers game, so every business owner would like to know X activity equals X result. And with cold email outreach, if you're able to keep your opens very high or clicks very high, you can actually confidently predict how many emails to send out to get how many calls. And then once those calls come in, you know how many calls before you send a proposal, how many proposals before you actually get a conversion. So Tim um, came through a campaign in August. In August, we sent out 2,000 emails, of which we had 1,500 opens. We had 33 replies, of which eight booked a call or were very positive. Of those eight calls, Tim became a client of 2,000 emails. Ooh, that was... So if we can keep that ratio up, then we're sending at the moment about 500 emails a day. So that's four days of activity to get in conversion. So we're building a pipeline. We're generating three to five calls a day from just cold outreach alone. And everyone comes back saying, um, well, they've, when I first went into cold outreach, I was just sending text emails. I was getting more people politely telling me to do one than actually interested, right? So what spurred me on was going from a lot of people saying not very nice things to me to putting a personalized video in there and them saying, uh, Andrew, thank you so much for reaching out, but this isn't for us. Um, and I was just so pleased that they said thank you, yeah. right? So a no is great, let's filter you out, you're never gonna buy, you're yes, these people I've never heard of. That gives you, that you can just keep contacting them. You'll get people unsubscribed, people will see through this and then say, um, say they're, not, they're not interested. But if we can keep this up on a weekly, monthly and annual basis, we can then work out what we confidently need to get to hit revenue targets. So you can then simulate how many additional emails. So we're currently at 500. The plan is to increase it to I think we're going to double it over the next couple of weeks. We've just hired two sales reps, so we know we have to guarantee them 60 calls per sales rep for them to be successful to hit KPI. So they need three calls a day, and to get three calls a day, they need five, three to 500 emails per rep. Uh, we've run this for an initial cohort, and four of them out of five ended up staying on as a retainer. We ran it as a managed service. We're now setting this up for businesses and saying, we will deliver you a custom video highlighting your offer. We will embed this into your um, CRM, your messenger channel, your website, your calendar, and it will work for you seamlessly, generating leads for each one of your sales teams. This can be set up per profile. What I like to do is run this under the senior person's profile that's never gonna do the prospecting and then have a round robin approach with a sales team that's lined up ready to take the calls and do the filtering into the business. That seems to work really well. So there's two services that we do. So we used to create the videos um, manually, run around with the camera. Then we created a video platform where people could be subscribed to creating the videos for social. The only way that we unlocked budget was actually the end result. Everyone, buys, everyone who's ever bought a video from me wants more leads but didn't know how to get it. So our mission is unlocking the power of video for businesses. So we can either help you set it up and you run the data and we'll show you how to do everything, or we can run it as a managed service where we find and verify the data, run it through our systems, and then we're trying to hit the KPIs on your behalf. I've gone from a team of three since starting that process to we're just touching on 15 and we've got plans to double in the next year. And I haven't got to take on any more money to do that. We did a very small friends and family round to build the platform. Um, but we've got the numbers to confidently grow this business. And it's uh, yeah, a massive change from me scrambling every month, hoping that referrals will come in. And I've worked with many of you in the business, so you, uh, no, many of you in the room have kind of seen my journey to where we are today. So I really wanted to share that, and I hope you really took some um, 
yeah, understanding of how you could build this into your business because it's very easy to do so. It just takes some time and planning and then hopefully you can simulate how that can add value to your business. Thank you.